I'd like to welcome each one of you to our devotional study today. We are in Genesis chapter 38. We're actually near the end of this chapter. Uh, this is a chapter that is kind of a pause or a parenthesis, if I can put it that way, uh, in the story of Joseph. While Joseph is uh, being sold into Potiphar's house as a slave and uh, taking a stand for that which is right, Judah, on the other hand, is in his own home country and uh, he is doing that which is wrong. He is not living morally upright. And we've seen all of that as we've moved through Genesis chapter 38. Now, as we come to the end of this chapter, we find the real reason why this chapter is in the word of God. And that is all to do with Judah's successor. So in Genesis 38, I want to read verses 27 to 30. And then we'll take a few moments to look at those verses today. So Genesis 38 verse 27. And it came to pass in the time of her travail, that is the time of the birth of the children, the time that uh, Tamar was experiencing these labor pains, that behold, twins were in her womb. And it came to pass when she travailed that the one put out his hand and the midwife took it and bound upon his hand a scarlet thread, saying, This came out first. And it came to pass as he drew back his hand that behold, his brother came out, and she said, How hast thou broken forth? This breach be upon thee, therefore his name was called Pharez. And afterward came out his brother that had the scarlet thread upon his hand, and his name was called Zerah. So we want to focus in specifically on one of these successors, one of these descendants of Judah today. Now, as we come into this passage, we are encouraged because we see how the, the grace of God overruled Judah's moral mess. And out of that mess, he produced Judah's successor. That is, he produced the one who would succeed Judah in regards to the birthright blessing, especially the important divine prince birthright, the one whom the Lord Jesus Christ would come through. And uh, keep in mind that Ur, that is uh, the firstborn in line for the birthright from Judah, and Onan, Ur's intended successor, both of those died. Both of those boys died without having any sons. And Judah's only offspring for the birthright uh, was through Tamar, the wife of Ur, um, by his immoral affair. So then as we come into this, we see a number of things here. First of all, we see the... Uh, the birth in verses 27 through 29. And scriptures give some interesting details regarding the birth of Judah's successor. It gives some interesting details regarding the birth of these two twins. Notice it says, uh, first of all, in verse 27, and it came to pass in the time of her travail that behold, twins were in her womb. So we see there that Judah's successor was a twin, that twins ran in the family, uh, for Judah's father, Jacob, was also a twin. And Rachel bore twins to Isaac in Jacob and Esau. So we see there the twins, but then we also see that there were some complications in verses 28 through 30, as we read earlier. And the actions of these twins at birth, we can say, were very unusual. And uh, also they indicate to us that Tamar, during this birth, would have experienced a great deal of extra pain in delivering her twins, considering what was taking place inside of her uh, with these twins. These were complications that in any day were serious, but especially back in the Old Testament times were very serious complications. But we can see how the hand of God was in it all, and it did not adversely affect the life of either of the twin babies or of Tamar. All lived through it, all were healthy, and all showed the hand of God in the midst of this situation. And we see in verse 29 that it says that, uh, And it came to pass as he drew back his hand, that behold, his brother came out, and she said, How hast thou broken forth this breach be upon thee? Therefore his name was called Pharez. So Pharez was born uh, after the other twin had already stuck his hand out the birth canal far enough that the midwife took a red thread and tied it around his wrist. After that, we know that he had hauled his, his wrist back in, his arm back in, 
And in being born after his brother had already stuck his hand out of the birth canal is described as a breach in this passage. And that is literally a word that's translated from the Hebrew word, which describes both power and a tearing or ripping of something. And because of this action, the baby called Pharez, uh was called Pharez, which is the same word translated breach. And that name Pharez was literally transliterated from the Hebrew language. So it's actually literally the Hebrew word that his name was. And then we see also here the uh, one in the family line of Christ. Pharez was the firstborn son of Judah. And because of that, he inherited the birthright, which means that from his seed was going to come the promised Messiah. So even through this mess, this incest situation, we can see the grace of God at work. Now, that doesn't give us a liberty to do whatever we want to do and say that God is still sovereign and that God is in control. But what it ought to do is it ought to give us comfort uh, as a people of God that when we do make messes, when we make mistakes, when we confess them and we repent, God can even use the messes that we get ourselves in to accomplish his purpose and his plan in this world. Friends, don't think that you're big enough to thwart the plan of God. And yes, we need to be sensitive to him. Yes, we need to be following him. But God can even take our mistakes and ultimately turn them around and use them for his honor and for his glory. Pharaoh is actually found not just in one of the genealogies of Christ, but he's found in both the genealogies of Christ in the New Testament. You find him uh, in Matthew chapter 1 and verse 3. And you also find him in Luke chapter 3, verse 33. Keep in mind that one of those gospels gives us the genealogy of Joseph and the other gospel gives us the genealogy of Mary. And, uh, you know, that alone, seeing Pharez in the genealogies, explains to us and helps us to see why we have this chapter that on the surface seems like a place in the Word of God this helps us to explain why it is there, why we have this record of Judah, because it speaks of the line of the Lord Jesus Christ. And Christ is the main theme of the scriptures. Everything in the scriptures points to him and is about him. And sometimes passages of scripture like this one that we looked at over these last five days, they may seem like a place. Or they may seem strange, they may seem unnecessary, and we may study them and say, why in the world is that there? But friends, we need to understand if God put it there, it is there for a purpose. It is there for a reason, and it's our duty to find out what that reason is. And uh, passages such as this have uh, will be found to have great value because, friends, they're focused on the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. So as we close this study out today in the life of Judah. Here's what I want you to understand. It, it's not, this does not justify someone being weak in character. It does not justify sin, but it does help us to see the importance of when we sin, that we are very quick to repent of that sin, which means not only confessing it and owning up to what we have done, but it also means turning from that sin, as we looked at yesterday. But it also ought to be a comfort and an encouragement to you and me as we go through life that when we um, kind of wander aimlessly through life and we don't know what's going on and sometimes we fail God, that God can take those mistakes in our life and that he can turn them around and that he can use those to accomplish his plan and he can use those for his glory. And friends, we ought to rejoice today that we serve a sovereign God. Have a great day, friends.